Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another short episode of Ask a Fish. We're still pushing on this near daily content. I think I've uploaded more in the last like two weeks than I did in the entire back half of last year. So let's just jump into it. New Dean multiscales look sick. Would love to hear your thoughts on them and the overall Dean line. Okay, so I've been seeing a lot of comments about Dean's new lineup on the internet last couple of weeks. Most of it kind of having fun at their expense. <laughs> so I think we have to talk about the big ones first. Dean has finally introduced some multiscales. I was actually pretty surprised to find out that up until now they haven't had any. I've always considered their models pretty metal focused with the attention grabbing shapes and headstocks. Like I don't think anyone has headstocks that say, look at me, I'm the captain now as much as Dean. And metal players embrace the multiscale thing a while ago. I'd even say the demand for multiscale peaked in 2017, 2018. Even from Ibanez, you don't see nearly as many multiscales being introduced now as you did then. Back then, everything was going multiscale. But now, finally, 2021, Dean is throwing their hat into that ring. The Exile and ML now have multiscale versions in six, seven, and eight string forms. And the reason that people are talking about them, the reason that a lot of gent guys are making fun of them, well, actually, it's for a couple of reasons. Firstly, is because of how the nut is perpendicular to the fingerboard, like how you'd find on normal monoscale guitars. That is not the standard for fan frets. Most fan frets, as the name suggests, are angled and spread out like a traditional Chinese fan. With these new Deans, that's not the case, but you still have a fairly standard multi-scale length, 27 inches on the bass strings, 25 inches on the treble strings. So I've been trying to imagine how these would feel to play in person, and I've come to the conclusion that it might actually be better for someone like me than your typical fan fret instrument. Like I spent all my time riffing out on the lower frets rather than doing the widdly widdlies on the higher frets. The relatively straight angle would make open chords feel more natural, making these deans hands down the best multiscales on the planet to bust out some Wonderwall. And all the while you're still getting the benefits of multiscale. Namely, more tension on the bass strings so you can throw on thicker gauges, chug harder, less pitch drift and intonation issues for lower tunings, and then less string tension on the treble strings so it's easier to bend and solo and all that for lead playing. Now that does bring up a potential concern about these. Now I am not a lead player at all, but from what I understand from my lead playing brethren, is that shredding has a lot to do with muscle memory. Your fingers just know where they need to go, where they need to be to rip that solo. With these, because the nut is perpendicular, even the first fret has a slight angle already. So by the time you get to the higher frets, the angle is fairly extreme, and I wonder if that wouldn't cause issues with that muscle memory. I mean, I'm sure you'd get used to it, I just wondered how big that adjustment would be. Lead players, I'd love to hear from you because as a rhythm player, I think this fan fret layout is kinda cool. The second thing my genty friends are not so keen on is that there are no hardtail multiscales this year. Every one of them comes with a Kaler trim specifically designed and angled for multiscale. Now, okay, I generally kinda try to stay away from trims. Setting them up is not fun. I've never tried a Kaler though, and from what I understand, it is a completely different beast to a Floyd. For one thing, you don't need to route out a huge amount of the guitar for the giant springs. It's a self-contained unit. There is a little bit of routing required, but it's not nearly as substantial as a Floyd. It's also super smooth. Kaler haters call it loose because it doesn't require a lot of force at all to go up or down. That's probably why Carrie King loves it. You can get real f***ing stupid real f quick with those. But apparently tuning stability is awesome. The one thing that concerns me is the angle of the bridge, right? Again, to get that dynamic 20 to 25 inch scale length with a flat nut, that means the bridge takes the full anglage? That's 100% not a word, but you get what I mean. Like the bridge angle is fairly nuts, and I don't know if that would cause problems if you're playing palm muted string skipping riffs. And the last thing is the price. Now I'll run through the specs in a second because they are quite good, but for the privilege of owning an 8 string Dean ML multiscale, it will cost you $2,500 US. Yikes. That is not cheap, especially considering these are still South Korean import models, not US built. Granted, they are quite unique, so they are gonna cost more. That's just what happens when you use special parts and not the same stuff as everyone else, but it is still a lot. Especially again, because it is quite different to what the intended target audience is probably used to seeing. The seven string is $2,400, the six string is $2,300. That's still prohibitively expensive if you were just curious to see what this fan fret layout would feel like. Like, I really wanna try one, 
just out of curiosity, but two grand is a pretty hefty investment to satisfy said curiosity, you know what I mean? But regardless, let's run through the specs and see what that cash gets you. The ML has a mahogany body, burled maple top, bolt-on three-piece maple neck with a slim D profile and satin back. From the pictures, I thought it was roasted maple, I guess it's not. Ebony fingerboard with the 16-inch radius, Grover tuners, angled Seymour Duncan Nazgul Sentient pickups, that's cool. I think LTD is the only other brand that has regular production models with that angled pickup combo in their M multi scale. The Exiles have the same specs, same price, the only difference is the bodies are made of alder instead of mahogany. So are these gonna be good? Like is that perpendicular nut genius or terrible? I legitimately have no idea. I kind of really want to try one though. Really curious to hear from you shreddy boys and genty girls. What are your thoughts on these? Everybody's generally copying everybody and Dean's just gone about it their own way. What do you think? Another highlight of Dean's lineup is the new Kerry King import model. Right, last year they had that super limited edition USA version. It was $8,666, so metal, with a Sustaniac. This one is $1,399 with a hard case, mahogany body, maple top, three-piece maple neck, ebony fingerboard, EMG 8185 combo with a preamp boost, Kaler hybrid trim, kind of simplified cross nail inlays. Uh, I guess I'm kind of happy for Kerry King fans that there's now one that isn't $8,000. I still hate the Maleficent hairdo slash earwig tail headstock and body shape though, so we move. There's a new import dime Razorback too. The Razorback is such a crazy shape. I kind of hate it. But with this graphic, I also kind of love it. And this version is cool because you're getting a lot of proper dime spec for your money. Mahogany body, mahogany neck with a V-shaped rosewood fingerboard, pearl, dime, razor inlays, Floyd 1000 series, Seymour Duncan 59 in the neck, dime bucker in the bridge. You even get the traction knobs that recreate where dime would actually have his tech burn little grooves into the speed knobs with a soldering iron to make them less slippery. In addition to the import, there are two new USA dimes that go for about $3,000 each, an ML in classic black and a Razorback in dime slime. I actually kind of really like the sprite color scheme with a flame top. You know, I've been respectfully critical of Dean in the past. Like it really seemed at times they were milking Dime's name for all it was worth. A ton of entry level and low tier imports. And I guess if Dime fans are demanding more models at every price point and it convinces people to pick up the guitar and play it, fair enough. But yeah, this time around, one high end import, two top tier USA models, seems very respectful to the legend. Two other USA models include Michael Schenker of Scorpions and UFO fame's 50th anniversary model. I gotta tell you, I'm kinda conflicted on this one. On one hand, it's super ugly. On the other hand, the concept of like, what's a word for a three-way inverse color scheme? It's gold, white, and black on one side, and then on the other, gold becomes black, black becomes white, and white becomes gold, even down to the Dean logo and the fingerboard binding. That is super cool. My absolute favorite, though, is the new Leslie West tribute, tattered and torn, aged trans Brasilia thoroughbred. Mahogany body, flame maple top, ebony fingerboard with proper pearl blocks. Amazing color, super tasteful aging. I love it. I really, really love it. It reminds me a lot of what Eastman is doing, what Maybach is doing. I love super high quality, vintage inspired single cuts. USA DMT nostalgia and mountain of tone pickups. It's got Leslie's signature and everything on the back of the headstock, so dope. I've never played a USA Dean, and unfortunately at five and a half grand, I don't think that's gonna change anytime soon. But yeah, just wanted to point this out because I love it and it's a great send off for an icon of rock. Back to the import front, the new MD24 floor Lloyds are pretty cool and probably some of my favorites from the new lineup. Kind of funny, I'm really not into the extreme shapes, so the ones I like are the least Deanie. But anyway, it comes in vintage blue and vintage orange, basswood bodies. The abalone dot inlays actually look sick with the roasted maple necks and fingerboards. Floyd 1000 series, Seymour Duncan custom and Alnico 2 pickups. Yeah, these are kind of like Dean taking on Charvel with a slightly different take. Basswood instead of alder, uniform 12 inch radius instead of the compound 12 to 16 inches. The style of roasted maple super strat is super popular right now. Really curious how these compare to the slightly more expensive DK24s. And there's also a black Kaler version, same pickups, but with an ebony fingerboard and non-roasted maple neck. You love to see how much love Dean gives to Kaler, and it helps their import line stand out from all the rest of the other guitars brands that are made in the same factories. They're also introducing affordable versions of the shape in the MDXs, one in black satin with a Floyd FR20, and one in blue quilt with a hardtail. Mahogany bodies, maple necks, and Indian rosewood fingerboards. They're actually built in India, which Cool. I know a lot of kits are built in India now, but I haven't come across 
fully assembled entry-level guitars from there yet, so very interesting. Usually, low-cost guitars are made in China. Really curious how this new factory stacks up and whether India is gonna be the next big place for super affordable guitars. And actually, all the new X-Series guitars are being made in India. So, that includes the new Cadillac X Floyd in black satin, the MLXs in black satin with the Floyd, Trans Brasilia, and Scary Cherry, that is such a great color name, the Therabreds in black satin with a Floyd and Maple Trans Blueburst, the VX in black satin and Trans Brasilia, and the ZX in black satin with a Floyd and Trans Brasilia. They all go for three. So yeah, let's go India. Let's see what you got before we get into the rest of it I just want to take a quick second to give a huge shout out to Javi and the rest of the amazing supporters over on patreon You guys are awesome. If you like what I do want to directly support me as well and get bonus perks You can join the patreon community link in the description the support has been amazing on this push to 100k Literally could not do it without you guys no pressure All I ask is that if you enjoy the content and you're part of the now 54% who aren't subscribed, hey, we got it down from 56%. Help your boy out, subscribe, it's free, and it massively helps out. But back to the Dean lineup, Fluence is a minor theme with the lineup this year. The Select Series is getting an ML, a Thoroughbred, and a V in black satin with Fluence Moderns. These actually look pretty sick. They look real sleek with the gray silver binding and logos. There's even more love with Kaler in the Select Series as well, with a V in metallic red and a Z in classic white both sporting the trem. One last interesting thing Dean is doing is, just like what we saw with LTD's 87 series, is going back and making import versions of models from their classic catalogs. There's a 79V in classic black, Trans Cherry Sunburst in Trans Cherry, a 79ML Floyd in classic black, and a 1980 Cadillac in Trans Cherry Sunburst and Natural Mahogany All with DMT time capsule pickups. I'm a huge fan of companies returning to their roots and reproducing the models that helped build their legacies. Whether it's for the old fans searching for those hard to find models or introducing new fans to models they never even knew existed, or reintroducing models that have been forgotten over the years. It's just really cool to see. So yeah, that is the Dean lineup for 2021 and just my initial reaction. There's actually a lot more there than I thought there was. Obviously the biggest talking point is the multi-scales, but also heavy emphasis on Kaler trims. They're kind of dipping their toes in Fluence with the three models, but in general, Dean isn't just trying to copy LTD or Schecter. They're going in their own direction with their own takes on modern guitars. So very curious to hear your thoughts on the multi-scales and on the lineup in general. And actually, I just got my first Dean a couple weeks ago. Dean were generous enough to send out a Cadillac for me to check out. I actually like it a lot better than I thought it would. It's still not any less ugly in person, like what on earth is happening with this massive headstock. But now that it's here, it's like an endearing ugly. And the guitar itself is actually real, real nice. So I will be making a full video, stay tuned on that. But when I'm done, Dean has already asked if I'd like to check out anything else from the 2021 lineup. The answer is yeah, if this Cadillac is anything to go by, absolutely. I mean, I really like that Leslie West one. I think it looks classy as f and I love the relicking, but it's also over 5K and I highly doubt Dean is feeling that generous to send one out. So here's where I just throw it to you guys. Which, if any Dean models, are you interested in and what do you wanna see on the channel? Any and all thoughts, can't wait to hear them in the comments below. And yeah, I know there have been a lot of these reaction videos lately. Obviously, all the new lineups are dropping now. I've got a couple more I'm filming at the moment. Music Man, Chapman. You guys really wanted Gretsch for some reason? We're still waiting on Schecter to reveal what the heck they're up to. So I'm trying to get an initial thoughts video out on as many as possible, gauge what your reactions are, what interests you guys, so I know what demos to set up for the year. So don't worry, it won't just be reaction and commentary content forever. Actual playing and reaction reviews will resume shortly. Literally just trying to figure out what to get on the channel that you guys actually want to see. That being said, if you are enjoying this near daily content, do me a favor and destroy the <laughs> out of that like button. Subscribe and hit the notification bell. That way you don't miss any new uploads. Social media, merch and discord server links are in the description. As always, thanks so much for watching. You've been awesome and I'm off to go film another one. See you for the next video. Hashtag pray for Jordan.